SpaceX has filed plans to launch its huge super heavy booster together with its Starship spaceship as part of the first orbital test of the Starship. This marks an exciting new development in SpaceX's efforts to deliver the first astronauts to the surface of the moon since 1972. This moon mission is part of a contract with NASA, and here are the details. The Verge reports that SpaceX has filed an application with the FCC outlining its plans for the first orbital test flight of its Starship spaceship within a year. Going orbital is a key stepping stone towards sending the first humans to the moon since the Apollo missions. To get that high, Starship's super heavy booster, a gigantic 70-meter rocket stage, will help it take off from SpaceX's facilities in South Texas. The orbital flight test would mark the first time SpaceX stacks both elements of its massive Starship system together. The booster stage will separate approximately 170 seconds into flight and will then perform a partial return and land in the Gulf of Mexico, approximately 32 kilometers from the shore. Meanwhile, Starship will fly over the Florida Strait and continue into orbit, nearly completing a full trip around Earth before plunging back through the atmosphere over Hawaii, roughly 90 minutes after launching from Texas. SpaceX says the landing would be a powered, targeted landing about 100 kilometers off the northwest coast of Kauai and what it calls a soft ocean landing. The Elon Musk-led company says it's hoping to collect as much data as possible during flight to quantify entry dynamics and better understand what the vehicle experiences in a flight regime, which is extremely difficult to accurately predict or replicate computationally. And here are some more videos of amazing things happening in space. The U.S. Space Force was established as an independent branch of the U.S. military when U.S. President Donald Trump signed the United States Space Force Act on December 20, 2019. Now less than a year later, the Space Force has announced that it has received ownership of the Air Force's top-secret experimental space plane, the X-37B. Interestingly, the X-37B will be operated by a new Space Force unit called Delta-9, which is dedicated to focus on orbital warfare. This means that Delta-9 will be responsible for combat operations and battles brought within the orbital sphere around planet Earth. The X-37B is an unmanned space vehicle that has a cargo bay similar to the space shuttle, but is designed to be much more maneuverable than the shuttle. Sources suggest the reusable space plane is like a satellite for intelligence gathering, although its ability to maneuver and change orbit makes it more flexible than conventional satellites. There are currently more than 160,000 pieces of space junk floating in Earth's orbit, and 34,000 of these are no longer than 10 centimeters. These pieces move at incredible speeds and pose a real danger to all current and future spacecraft. The BBC reports that the world's first test satellite that uses magnets to gather up space junk will launch this week. The test satellite is called ELSA-D and it consists of two spacecraft, a 175kg chaser and a 17kg target. These two units will go up together on a Soyuz rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan and once in orbit, separate to play multiple games of cat and mouse. The chaser will use its sensors to find and chase down the target, latching onto it via a magnetic docking plate. It will then release the target for other capture experiments. The tasks will become increasingly complex, with the most difficult maneuver requiring the chaser to grab the target as it is tumbling. Ultimately, the chaser will grab the target and drop out of orbit to burn up in the atmosphere. The company that created the LCD test satellite, Astroscale, says the next phase of the program would be to retrieve multiple pieces of debris in a single mission. The company expects to launch this mission by the end of 2023. Following up on his plans to transport 1 million people to Mars by 2050, Elon Musk's company, SpaceX, has now declared that it will also send hundreds of satellites to Mars to provide the colonists with space internet. SpaceX is currently building a Starlink mega constellation of small communication satellites around Earth and has already launched around 800 of these satellites into low Earth orbit. This mega constellation of satellites will eventually cover every part of Earth, and Elon Musk said it will give all people on Earth access to low-cost broadband internet. According to a recent interview with Time magazine, the company now plans to build the same mega constellation around Mars to provide the one million future citizens of Mars with space-based internet. Shotwell said the Starlink concept would also create a robust communication link between Mars and Earth, providing an interplanetary internet bridge. This ambitious satellite plan for Mars is typical of Elon Musk, who is spending big money on creating the rockets and spaceships required to get people to Mars. 
This pristine part of New Zealand has been launching small satellites to space for months. The company that owns it is now upping its game to challenge SpaceX in the making and launching of big space-bound rockets. Here are the details. CNBC reports that New Zealand's small rocket specialist, Rocket Lab, has broken its promise to stick to small, non-reusable rockets. It will now start to challenge SpaceX in the construction and launching of large reusable rockets. The company has been launching small rockets from its launch site on New Zealand's Mahia Peninsula using its lightweight rocket called Electron to launch small payloads like CubeSats into space. This Electron rocket was designed to carry only 230 kilograms of cargo to orbit for roughly $7 million per launch. Meanwhile, SpaceX's workhorse, the Falcon 9, can carry 22.7 tons to the same orbit for about $60 million. Rocket Lab's stated goal was to try to launch lots of cheap rockets every three days or so to open up space to a wave of new customers. With this planned new Neutron rocket, however, Rocket Lab puts itself in much closer competition with SpaceX. The 40-meter-tall rocket should be able to carry more than 8 tons to orbit. Like the Falcon 9, it would be reusable and able to carry humans. SFGate reports that a recent massive glacial avalanche in Tibet was predicted by scientists who studied images created by a constellation of small satellites, each no bigger than a shoebox. Operated by a company called Planet, these satellites weigh just over 5 kilograms each and fly in flocks of around 175 satellites. If one fails, the company replaces it. And as better batteries, solar arrays, and cameras become available, the company simply updates its satellites. Thus, a quiet and often overlooked revolution has taken place in the way satellites are manufactured and operated. The result is an explosion of data and imagery from orbit. Like computers, satellites have also shrunk drastically. Instead of being the size of a truck, costing as much as $400 million, satellites now are often no larger than a microwave. They now cost as little as a million dollars or less and can be mass-produced in factories. Their numbers have also grown significantly. The number of satellites in operation almost tripled from 2015 to about 3,371 by the end of 2020. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.